This presentation is about maple syrup urine disease, presented by Laura Pierce and Rebecca Gordon. Maple syrup urine disease is an autosomal recessive inheritance disease. It is caused by a mutation on chromosome number 19, and it actually is inherited from both the father and mother, so both parents must be carriers in order for the child to be able to inherit the disease. In fact, if both parents are carriers, then the child has 25% chance of getting the disease and 50% chance of also being a carrier. And this is just a diagram outlining the genetic pathways of the disease. So you can see if uh, both parents have the disease, then the child has a 25% chance, chance of having the disorder and a 50% chance of being a carrier. Um, typically, the disease will actually present within 12 to 24 hours after birth, so it is identified within infancy, and other rare forms of the disease could appear later. So, um, to a child that has MSUD, the body is unable to process certain amino acids properly um, and this can result in things, uh, most specifically a distinctive urine odor. Um, the urine smells like maple syrup, which is why the disease was named as such. Um, also, it can result in poor feeding, vomiting, lethargy, uh, developmental delay, apnea, and uh, certain stereotype movements like fencing or bicycling um, after the child is about four or five days old. Also, milder forms can present as anorexia, poor growth, irritability, or developmental delay later in childhood. And this is just a display showing the difference between normal amino acid breakdown and the amino acid breakdown of someone with MSUD. And on the right, you can see the person with MSUD and how the body isn't able to break down the amino acids and therefore you have a buildup of them which leads to specific health problems previously described. So the prognosis for someone with MSUD um, is pretty good. I mean it is life-threatening if it's left untreated. It can result in coma, death, neurological damage. Um, Life stresses such as surgery or injury or things like that can trigger high levels of amino acids, therefore threatening the life. But with proper diet um, and, and proper care, children can grow to adulthood uh, with fewer problems. And basically, it is a somewhat rare disease. Uh, the prevalence is only 1 in 185,000 infants worldwide, but there are specific populations in which the disease is more common. One specific population is the old order Mennonites, and then also studies have shown that it is higher among um, infants of French-Canadian descent. And uh, the disease is caused by a mutation in one of four genes that comprise a protein complex responsible for breaking down amino acids, as discussed before. Um, and these amino acids can be found in many foods, uh, so this could pose problems um, to anyone eating a normal diet. And it's diagnosed uh, usually by the smell of the urine, the maple syrup smell. And once the disease is suspected, a simple blood test for amino acids can be used to verify that an individual has the disease. And diagnostic tests can include urine amino acid tests and also plasma amino acid tests. Um, there are many levels of prevention which can be taken in this specific disorder. Um, one way to deal with it is genetic counseling for at-risk families as both parents have to be carriers in order for a child to actually receive this disease. Um, if parents know that this is a risk, then they should seek genetic counseling just so that they're prepared for the possibility of their child having this disease. Um, Certain states also screen all newborns for this disorder. One state would be in Pennsylvania due to the higher population of some of the Mennonite populations and things that were previously described as being a specifically at-risk population. Um, otherwise, in certain states you will actually have to request the screening for this if you know that you are at risk. 
And again, it's a blood sample in babies specifically. It's taken from the heel to analyze the high levels. And if the screening comes back positive, then immediate tests of amino acids should be completed at that time. And so some implications for families of children with this disease, um, there are a lot of treatments for it, lifelong dietary restrictions to control the amount of amino acids uh, the child is ingesting, uh, and sometimes the, the brain might start to swell and uh, the, you might have liver complications and that would require intensive care and possibly transplant. Um, and as infants, a synthetic formula that has lower levels of the amino acids can be fed, and at severe times, uh, things such as fluids, sugars, and fats can be given through an I IV just to make sure that the child is getting the proper nutrition without all of the risky amino acids. And peritoneodialysis or hemodialysis can also be used to lower the level of amino acids in the um, individual. And with diet and regular medical checkups, uh, individuals can live long and healthy lives. And there are a variety of disorders associated with this. MUSCD is what you'll most commonly hear it referred to as, but this list includes other diseases that are associated that you may hear. And so these are just some resources for families of children with MSUD. Um, you can get a lot of information from sites like this that might be really informative and helpful.